Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to recreate the good old famous Flappy, Girl, uh, Flappy Bird game on a uh, mobile screen in Godot 4. So if I press space the game will start and it should start spawning the pipes. As you can see we have the points counter uh, we have the ability to control the flight of our bird and I'm pretty good at the game uh, even though I made the the uh, the area between the pipes a little bit bigger so it's easier than the original game uh, and of course you can crash into ground and you see that fade out fade in effect and a simple game over many and you can see the points counted so this is what we're going to recreate today. You can see me here in our good old um, project manager and let me just find the mouse highlight so you can see my cursor better. Uh, again, this is gonna be a simple 2D game. So we're going to go to new project. I'm gonna browse to here and here and I'm gonna create new folder call this Godot tutorial this folder is gonna be good uh, we're gonna use git uh, forward renderer and let's create an edit so we have our Godot window loaded let's switch to 2d and the first thing I am going to do is I will bring all the assets that we need for our game and you can of course find all of this on github and the link is gonna be in the description so let's take a look at this we have the font which is the flappy bird font I find it out on the internet this is not the exact as the one that is used in the original game but it's close enough for our needs we have the background we have the base, which is the ground. We have the game over sign, the pipe, uh, and the bird and the animation. Cool. Uh, so as always, I'm gonna just create a main node to keep everything uh, in order. Let's create new folder scenes, save the main, and let's go here and I'm gonna set as main scene, run it. Okay, it works. So first thing that, I hope it works. It should work. Yep, it works. Uh, first thing that I would like to set, uh, set is actually the, um, the dimensions of our window so let's go to project settings and here under display window I'm going to change the dimension to be more mobile so 288 by 512 um, set the stretch to viewport aspect keep okay and I believe these are like more let's say iPhone-ish dimensions and definitely something way more suited for our Flappy Bird game. Okay, sip of the tea and we can start creating new scene and let's focus on our player first. So uh, I'm gonna create um, other node and I'm gonna search for her character body 2D uh, this is going to make our life way easier and I'm gonna add some nodes that we need which is going to be sprite 2d obviously and let's start with the mid flap drop it of course you can see this is kind of blurry but we are using the uh, pixel art so let's go to texture and change the filter to nearest so it's 
uh, really, really uh, sharp. I'm going to change this to be a bird. Uh, we also need a collision shape to detect the collisions. So, and for a shape, we're going to need a capsule. And you can see, oops, you can see it's not really matching perfectly. So we can stretch it, maybe move it around. But, but as you can see, it does stretch in the Y axis. So to adjust that, we can rotate it 90 degrees and then stretch it as needed. This is fine for me. Let's save it. Uh, there's going to be another node that we will use a little bit later, but let's add it all together right now. And that's that is going to be animation player. Cool. And then we will set up our input for the player and game is so simple that we only need one. So add new action and let's call this uh, jump. And this is going to be triggered by space. Cool. Basically, we have everything that we need to start scripting. So let's do just that. Let's create a new... Hmm, do we want it in scripts? Uh, well, yeah, okay. We can keep it next to the scene. So let's create one. And you can see that you will get um, basically basically this bootstrapped uh, script uh, for the movement of character body to the. Uh, we're gonna get rid of all of all, of all of it and we will write our own. So let's start by giving it class name because it's always the same thing to do. Okay. Uh, we will also need some variables that are exported. So that's going to be the gravity of our game. And I will set this to 900. And as always, these are just values that work for me. You can use different values to maybe um, have the heavier feeling of a bird and applying more gravity or otherwise. Okay, then we will need the force of the jump. So jump, force, and this is going to be 300. Uh, and we can already get the reference to animation player. Oops. So if you don't know how I am doing this magic, if I take a look at the scene tree and I will just drag, it's going to just drag the reference, right? But if I drag and here I'm going to press control and then let go, it's going to create on ready reference with a proper naming for variable. Okay. We will also need max speed. So the maximal speed of our bird that can be reached when it's falling down and rotation speed. And I'm going to set this to two and actually just for fun, we can export that. Wonderful. Uh, moving on, um, we need a ready function. And for that, I'm going to just I set the velocity to vector to zero. And this is the property we inherit from character body to D, which describes the movement of our player. So this is basically describing how our character is moving, right? With velocity set to vector to zero, because this is velocity calculated for Y and X axis. It's not going to move at all. Okay. And then the rest of what we need, we will just do in physics process. And we're using physics process instead of process because um, character body to D is, um, is basically relying on the internal Godot physics engine to calculate the proper movement. And since our movement is not based on changing the position directly, but rather on applying velocity, we we're, we're going to use physics process instead of process. 
Okay, let's handle the input. Is action just pressed? Jump. Uh, then I guess we will jump, right? Uh, and then uh, we need that. Okay, we need the definition of the jump. So that's going to be rather simple. Jump is going to change the y velocity. So velocity y is equal to jump force. And we will also set the rotation. So this is going to be degrees to radians minus 30. Uh, yeah. And then we will also need, so if we jump, we change the velocity, but we also have to calculate the velocity based on the gravity. So velocity y is equal gravity times delta. And then also we have to um, take into account the maximal falling speed. Uh, if you don't know, the objects that are falling down uh, due to the force of gravity are going to reach something called terminal velocity, which is like the maximal speed that they can fall down with. Uh, physics school. Velocity y. Is it greater than max speed? And just limit that to velocity y max speed. I believe this is the correct statement. We could also probably do something like velocity y is equal to mean um, it's gonna be the minimal value between velocity y and max speed. That's even better because it's smarter and it's a one-liner. So these and these are basically the same. But this is the way that the cool kids do it. Oh yeah. Okay, and then to actually apply our velocity and and do the movement, we must call move and collide. And we have velocity times delta. Cool. Okay, and then uh, as we move, we also have to rotate the bird. So let's create another function, rotate bird. And, and then we're gonna write it. So I think uh, rotate uh, downwards when falling, right? So if velocity y is greater than zero and rad to degrees of rotation is less than 90, times, uh, and here I have degrees to rad times one. As, and this could be like, let's do it like real programmers do. So if we're falling down, then try to add to rotation uh, by this, uh, this value. And there's other case when we could be rising. So rotate up words when rising velocity y is less than zero because remember that the y is pointing down in in uh, godot uh, and rat to degrees of rotation is less is greater than minus 30 minus 30 cool uh, then we'll do the same minus equals rotation speed times degrees to rad one 
Okay, yeah. That should be the very basics of our movement. So if we press jump, we jump, uh, applying the rotation and velocity. And other than that, we're moving uh, as we should with the gravity. And at the very end, we are rotating the birds based on the movement. So if we're falling down or rising up. Let's run this scene by going here or pressing F6. And... Oh yeah, okay, we're falling down. Okay, we're falling down. That That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Um... Basically, what we can do here is instantiate that bird. Uh, and you can see it being here, the 0, 0, 0, which is fine. But it's gonna, this is the, the rectangle, the viewport that's gonna be rendered by default by Godot. So it's gonna, it's gonna start in the 0, 0, 0. I would rather in my games, from most of the time, have the zero 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 uh, as the center um, that just easier for me to do the calculations so to move it i'm gonna do camera to d and it's gonna position itself in the center and now my bird is in the center and what's gonna get rendered is that viewport uh, bordered by the pink color okay let's try running that okay so yeah it it feels like uh it feels like it's not actually jumping at all, right? It's just falling down. So let's see what is wrong here. Um, gravity. Uh, oh, yeah, it should be velocity y is equal to jump force. Um, that seems to be correct move and collide rotate bird max speed jump force oh of course if we want to move up we have to add minus here let's try now oh yeah okay yeah now we're jumping now we're able to jump okay the thing is the the falling down of the bird is not going to start um, before you press the space for the first time. Okay, before that it, it just sits idle in the middle of the screen. So uh, let's fix that and maybe just for fun to make our game look a little bit better. Uh, let's go to main and to the and I'm gonna add a child, call this background back round. Cool. Move it up and add the background day to it. Well, now it's you can tell already way better, right? Okay, yeah. Now it now it feels like a game. Cool. But as I mentioned, it should be idle before we press the space for the first time. Uh, so we have to actually add a flag here. Call this is started. Set it to false. Um, and if it's not started, we shouldn't apply the gravity or rotate the bird. So if not is started, just return. And then if it's not started, um, that is started true. Cool. And now it should just hang in the middle. Perfect. And then if I press space, the the gravity is going to apply. And as you can tell, we are not moving uh, our bird in X axis. 
what we're actually going to move in x axis is going to be the ground and the pipes. Okay, so to finalize our wonderful uh, game, our wonderful bird, we're going we can work a little bit on the animations. So let's go to animation player. And we will need two animations. First is gonna be the idle, and uh, when the when the game starts, you have that idle animation where basically the um, our bird just hovers a little bit to the top and then drops down. So let's create new animation. Call this idle. Add a track, and it's gonna be property track bird. And we're searching for position. Right. And we will need two keys here. The animation itself is gonna take a second. So insert key here. Then move to 0.5, insert another key. And we're starting at 0, 0, 0. And we're moving to 0, minus 10. Uh, what we can do is change the interpolation to cubic. It's gonna look a little bit better. And yeah, basically that's all we have to do. Uh, and here then we can call animation player play idle. And Oh, uh, we have to <laughs> we have to set the animation to be looping. So go here and here we can find animation looping. I believe that should fix the issue. Yeah, you can see it's kind of bobbing up and down, right? So this is for our idle animation, and then for our wings flapping animation, uh, we're gonna go to animation new and I'm gonna call this flap wings attract sprite to D and of course texture uh, the whole animation is gonna be pretty short pretty fast point free set looping do to true and then we have to add the keys so insert key then move I believe second is um, point one insert key point oops sorry point two no this is point two and insert key nope you can change it here go to time point two okay so we have keys at zero point one point two and we can change the value here. So we'll start with the down flap for zero. Check your time here. Go to point one, it's a mid flap. This is correct. And point two is gonna be up flap. Okay. And then if we start our game, so here after pressing the first jump, we're just gonna call animation player play flap wings let's see how it goes okay now we're in the idle and i'm gonna press space and we're flying guys this is perfect this is great wonderful okay this is most of the bear done um to make the uh, the our game our world look a little bit better let's add the ground and um, how it works in the game is that the let's use our wonderful paint which i love for game design so uh, we have the static window of our game we have the not moving bird right and then we have ground right which is here and you have this notion of it constantly moving on the x axis but what is actually happening is that you have two 
types of ground, right? That are moving in this direction. And once the first one, so this one leaves the screen completely. So being here is going to it's going to pop up back here. So it's like a two element array that just checks the position of the tile and keeps popping back out. So you have this, this feeling that the ground is infinitely scrolling while these are just two tiles that are just constantly moving back and forth. Right? Simple game tricks. Okay, let's do that. So, um, what we're going to do is we are going to create new scene. It's going to be 2D scene. I'm going to call this ground. Go ground. Okay, save it. And the structure here is pretty simple. We are going to have uh, area 2D, which is going to be ground 1. And then we're going to have area 2D, which is going to be ground 2. Um, and they will use a sprite as a child. Okay, and both will use base here and here. Okay, now they're at the same position, so let's make sure to click on the area and move it out of the way so they're sticking together, right? But yeah, so they're as close together as possible but do not overlap and do not have any gap between them. Cool, we can add the um, collision detection. So that's going to be collision shape. And rectangle is going to be fine. It doesn't have to be big, but it has to be as close to the top as possible. So here and, and here. Here, okay, cool. Uh, and let's do the same here. So, collision shape rectangle. Oops, not that. Move it again. The the size, the width doesn't matter. It can be as thick or as thin as you'd like. It's about the placement. Okay, perfect. Cool. And this is the basic setup and we can start scripting. So, add the script. And let's start, of course, by adding the class name. So, class name is just ground. We have a um, speed here, which is going to be, well, you can actually adjust it if you want from the editor, minus minus 150. I get the reference to the sprites. Uh, yes, so control drag, oops. And control drag and I'm going to change the names to be sprite one and sprite two. Cool. Wonderful. Uh, so yeah, let's start by setting the proper position. We already did, but let's do it via code just to make sure. So sprite 2, global position x should be sprite 1, global position x plus sprite 1 or sprite 2, doesn't even matter because they use the same texture, get 
width. Okay, and then the movement itself. Uh, so that's going to be done in process. Uh, here we're going to use the process, not physics process, because we will manipulate the position um, directly and not by using some kind of physics velocity manipulation. So sprite one global position x plus equals speed times delta, of course. And the same is going to apply to sprite 2. Okay, and this is the movement. And if I play this, maybe you will be able to see that they're just passing by, right? You can see this. Uh, but what we actually need to do is to check whether one is moving out of the screen and whether we should uh, change the positions of those. So if sprite one global position x is less than minus sprite texture get width, then sprite one global position x is equal to sprite two global position x plus sprite to texture get width okay so this is for sprite one and uh, that should be sprite one so if the sprite already moved through the whole width of its texture right then reapply the sprite position to be the starting position of sprite 2 and same goes here if sprite 2 global position x is less than minus sprite 2 texture get width A sprite to global position x is equal to sprite one global position x plus sprite one texture get width. And that should give us the notion of this endless scrolling. So just to add comment to make it maybe more clear. If sprite one has completely left the screen, move it to the right of sprite two. Uh, and this is left. This is pretty much the same, but if sprite two right one okay so we're just switching positions here okay uh let's see whether this actually works so instantiate child scene ground see how this should be set up and it should be at the very bottom right and it doesn't have to be perfect that should be good enough. Let's try and run it now. Yeah, perfect. We have that endless scrolling. And it was easier to set up than you might think. Um, cool. What's next? As you can see, we can hit the ground and that should end the game. So let's program that. Let's add the uh, collision detection here. And we know that the only body that can hit our ground or later the pipes is our bird. So that's going to be rather easy. Let's do it like this. Let's go to the collision. Let's go to the ground one. Sorry. 
and find you can see here aria entered entered but we are actually searching for body entered because our bird is character body 2d so body entered and connect to let's call this just on on body entered okay and the same we're gonna connect here so find it connect uh, pick the method here on body entered so as you can see now we have those two nodes connected to a uh, function here and what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to emit a signal so basically signals in Godot are like the pieces of information that given node can emit to the world that something has changed or happened and then other nodes can listen to that it's like a glorified glorified observer or listener pattern and the signal here gonna be bird crashed uh, so here we're going to to do a few things and that's gonna be first emit that so bird crashed emit that's gonna be information then we will call the function called stop it's gonna be a really simple function that we'll also use later and stop is gonna just set the speed to zero and we're gonna also call we know that the body is a bird so i can just cast it and i can just say stop and now we need to create that function in our bird Let's go to the bottom, setup, stop. That's way better. So what do we need to do for the bird? Um, there are a few things actually. So we have to stop our animation player. Uh oh, that should be a function, right? Bukna? Pants, punus, function. Animation player. Um, we have to stop, we have to disable the gravity to not continue the movement downwards and we have to set the velocity of our bird to vector to uh, zero. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Um, Oh, basically, yeah, I think so, because we shouldn't process the input if we stop the bird, right? So let me add another flag here. I'm going to call this should process input, and I'm going to set it to true. So by default, yes, read the input from the user. Um, and if not, and if it's dead, then do not do this anymore. Uh, so maybe let's let's start by commenting that and see what could have happened. So let's try and see where we can actually crash into the ground. Yeah, everything seems fine, but then as you can see, there's no graffiti. I can press space and just fly off to the moon. So let's disable the input from the user. And now we should be able to properly crash. Yeah, cool, perfect. Uh, okay, what else do we need? We will need a way to spawn our pipes. Um, yeah, so let's create new scene. Uh, I'm going to choose empty, so just node. I'm going to call this pipe spawner. Seems about right. Save it. And we also need the timer here, which I'm going to name. Sp 
bone timer. Okay, so this is the the scene that's gonna spawn our pipe pairs. So I'm gonna assume we will need to create also something to spawn. So let's create new scene that's gonna be 2D scene. And let's think about what we'd like to create here. We would like to create two pipes at the one at the top, one at the bottom, the the area between them that we can pass through, and probably some kind of information that the bird successfully passed through the pipes. So let's start adding these. I'm gonna add area to D and call this top pipe, and I'm gonna create another one and call this you guess it bottom pipe cool um let's add a sprite and this is going to be uh, from the assets pipe green okay so this is the top pipe, so let's actually do and rotate that. Uh, that's going to be 180. And then the position. So um, I'm going to do minus 300. And let's change the name to pipe pair and save it. And the same is going to be here. So a chart sprite to D pipe green. Uh, the transform is going to be 300. And of course, if you'd like to, to maybe make it harder or gradually make it harder, you change the position because now the area between those two is uh, 100. 100, 600, 600 uh, pixels wide. Uh, so you could make it smaller, so it would be harder. What else do we need? We need collision shapes, of course. So collision shape for that, and rectangle is going to be good enough. Let's drag it, position it correctly doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be say good enough here and here then here at the collision shape too um, this is incorrect you can see I've made a mistake I set the transform on the sprite to D but it should be on the bottom pipe area. So go here. Cool. Let's now position that. So I'm just clicking and dragging here. Uh, that would be about right. Oh, well, that's good enough. Okay. And we also need information about when the the bird went through the the area between pipes. So I'm just gonna create um, an area to D without the visual representation. So without the sprite to D, I'm gonna call this scored or something like that because it's scoring as a point at collision shape to D. Move it outside a little bit at the shape so basically if our bird went through this shape right it means it's it's like through the through the obstacle and the point is scored okay time to 
code this a little bit. So let's um, let's add some code. Piper, remove everything. Um, class name is the Piper. The starting speed is gonna be zero because we're gonna use the pipe spawner that we created to control that. Uh, there's gonna be a function to set the speed. Okay, that's gonna be used by our pipe spawner. During the process, we're gonna just adjust the position x by speed. Um, what else do we need? We need, of course, the information about the point being scored or the information about um, bird crashing, right? So, we will <laughs> we'll just emit signals. That's the simplest thing you can do. Bird entered point scored. And we'll create a function that can call this. So on body entered body emit bird entered because we know that only the bird can do that. Um, and on scored on point scored that also should take the body as argument and call point scored emit cool and then we can connect everything that we need so top pipe node body entered connect pick a function that's gonna be on body entered perfect here do the same body entered connect pick we already created the function for that and then scored body entered pick uh, on point scored wonderful uh, yeah, and this is for the most part our pipe pair. And we can go back to pipe spawner and start coding that. So let me think. Let's set up the spawn timer first. We will spawn a pipe every two seconds. That seems like a good. Um, amount of time and yeah with that we can start coding let's add a script um, get rid of everything uh, class name is a pipe spawner same as the file pretty much always um, we can just preload this scene for the pipe pair. So let's preload. That's going to be pipe pair TSCN. Uh, the pipe speed should be the same as the ground, but you can play around with that. So export bar pipe speed is equal to minus 150. Uh, and we need reference to a timer. Okay, and I'm ready to connect to a timeout. So spawn timer, timeout, connect to a function that we'll call spawn, uh, spawn pipe or pipes or pipe. It's so good. Let's define that function. Uh, spawn pipe 
let's pass for now so that it's all good and basically we will have few elements here in our wonderful game uh, so we're gonna have the, the pipe spawner we're gonna have some kind of UI and we're gonna have bird and we will have ground so we have few objects that should somehow coordinate with each other the state of our game and in that case i believe the good approach would be to create some kind of master or uh, god object that's gonna ar actually orchestrate all of those objects some kind of say game manager that's how i'm going to call this even though i really despise the word manager but we can use it to basically keep all of our scripts and scenes dump and all of the management orchestration point scoring and all of that can be managed by this smart guy and this is actually uh this is actually i think rather good solution for that situation because you have some very very damp components like scenes that don't really have to know about each other and there's only one guy that knows how to actually arrange everything in place right so we have one big component that knows about stuff and then other stupid components that can be just reused or don't know don't have to know anything about the game itself right they're just components doing stuff well of course the pipe spawner knows about the pipe there okay so let's actually add that game master uh, game master uh, actually no let's first uh, finish that so uh, let's add a function that's going to be used by our game master game manager start spawning bytes and it's just gonna start the timer and then we will spawn the pipe so pipe is pipe per scene instantiate as pipe Pair um, a child pipe, and we would like to uh, at the start spawn the pipe like outside of the viewport, right? So we have to get the reference to viewport rect, which is get viewport get camera to D get viewport rect. We have to find the proper position for it um, so it is easy with the x position it's just viewport rect and x right and then um, and then what we have to find like Let's move back to paint, which I love. We are spawning the... So this is the... Let's say this is the game, right? And we are spawning pipes. And we cannot spawn them always in the very same spot because that would make game too easy. So we have to randomly move them up and down on the y-axis to make the game harder right uh, and we can do that by finding the random value on the y-axis with some slight adjustments so let's find the half the height of our viewport and this is viewport rect size y divided by 2 
uh, and then pipe position y can be run f in a range from viewport viewport rect size y times and these are just my proportions but they seem work fine minus half height and viewport size y times 0.65 minus half the height cool uh, and then we have to listen to the signals so pipe bird enter connect to function we're gonna call on bird entered and pipe point scored connect uh, on point scored and we have to create that functions so we will also have two signals here and basically as you can see what we're doing is we're re-emitting the signals maybe with some slight modifications so um let's put the signals below the class name signal bird crashed and signal point scored let's see what would we like to do on bird enter uh, function on bird entered we need to emit the crash signal so bird crashed emit and we also have to spawn the spawning uh let's also define on point scored and make it pass for now um what seems to be the issue send alone lamps oh yeah, 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 the indentation is wrong. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, we want to emit the bird crash signal and we would like to stop the spawning. So, stop. Let's write that function. So, first thing we have to do is stop the spawn timer. And then, basically, we have to find all the pipes that we have spawned so far and stop moving them. But there's going to be one problem. As you can see here, we, uh, here we are adding the, the pipes as children of our pipe spawner. So our tree will look like uh, that the first child is going to be spawn timer then the second is going to be pipe the third is going to be another pipe and so forth and so on and we would like to disable the speed the movement only on those children that are actually pipes so we have to be smart about it so we're going to iterate the pipes but we have to find the children that actually are pipes. And you can do that by using get children, which is going to return the array that we can then filter. And here I can write lambda expression, so inline function, child return is pipe pair. Because then you can tell uh, pipe as pipe pair speed is equal to zero uh, zero expected what is expected um for pipe um i forgot to close something for pipe in get children 
filter function child return is piper um wait 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 is this okay this is correct so filter i had to have that typo somewhere return child is piper ah how it works okay so this won't be called for a spawner because we're getting the all of the children and then filtering out any that are not by pair. Okay, and on point scored, we're just gonna call point scored uh, emit. And then we can add our pipe spawner here. And let's see whether it's gonna actually spawn some pipes. Oh, it's not going to spawn anything because we're not calling, uh, let's for now call this here and for now make it pass just to test the stuff. Oh, yeah, that was a little bit too much, right? Because we need to set speed uh to pipe speed okay let's try this again so running waiting two seconds mm, this isn't correct because it should move and it should be in the different place. Um, let's see. This is pipe spawner. The camera. Yes, yes. And I think where our issue is, so everything is good in the um, pipe spawner, but in pipe pair, the position X should be equal plus equal speed because we're incrementing, right? And now if we test this, Yeah, we can see it boop, moving up and out. So this is cool. The one problem though I have right now is if we take a look at the pipe spawner, we can see two pipes, even though in the screen is only one. So should probably uh, just to conserve the resources uh, and memory and make our game more performant, remove the pipes that are moving out of the screen. So in the pipe pair, let's go here and let's add a node. And this is visible on screen notifier. Go to node and let's connect to screen exited. And here we're just gonna call QE3 to get rid of the obsolete pairs that are out of the screen. Cool, so we have that. Oh, what else do we need? We need that that wonderful, beautiful uh, game manager, right? So, yeah, let's write it. Let's just add a note, call this game, uh, add a note, call this game manager, move it up. Add a script. Uh, the script is actually called Game Manager. I would rather prefer it to be named. Well, it's okay. We can live with that. 
So let's get references to everything that we need so far. So uh, we're going to need the reference to a bird. So let's drag and drop it. Um, we are going to need the reference to pipe spawner. Drag and drop it. And ground. Drag and drop it. And that's it for now. Let's track points here. Um, yeah, and basically we would like to start spawning the pipes on the first space press instead of the start. So we have to do some manipulation and connection here. So we have that information in our bird that somebody pressed the game for the first time here, right? So I can just go to a um, bird and add a signal, call this game started um, and say game started emit. Cool. Then in game manager, I can listen to it. and say bird uh, game started and I don't have autocomplete but I can cast it now I should have it connect on game started and I can say pipe spawner us pipe spawner or alternatively i believe i could do no that's good pipe spawner uh, start spawning pipes cool and then what else do we need um, we have to do other connections. So, ground uh, as ground, we have to emit information that we crashed here and we have bird crashed emit. So, we could just do bird crashed connect um, basically that's that's the end of the game end game so create end game which is going to be just ground stop bird stop Uh, and pipe spawner stop we have that function here right yes perfect so this is our end game then the same should happen when we get the information that bird crashed from the pipe spawner and information about point being scored Mm, connect. Uh, it should be actually just to keep it consistent. We should rename this um, to on end game. Or no, this is a good end game. Okay. And then here, point scored, we will have on point scored. And it's going to just update the pun pun points for now. Function to update the points. Points scored. Points plus equals one. Mm, on. Points scored. Uh, 
yeah. Like this, this makes sense. So let's run it. See whether this actually works. Go to remote, main, click on the game manager, inspector, and here you can see the points, right? And if we play the game, press space, you can see the amount of points is actually uh, increasing, but there's a problem because we hit the pipe and our our bear should fall down instead of being stuck here. So let's fix that. Let's remove that print. So go to a bird and instead of just calling stop, which puts everything to stop, I'm gonna split it in two. I'm gonna create kill function. And here I'm just gonna say should process input false. Uh, and then on the main, I'm gonna kick all bird kill. Yeah, let's see about that. I'm crashing to the ground, everything is okay. Now let's crash into the pipe. Okay, yeah, it's falling down. The only problem is that it's rendered behind the pipe and the order in the tree matters. So if I bring the bird to be first, like um, before the pipes, then it, sh it should render first. Okay, try this again. Press space, crash into pipe. Cool. Okay, uh, let's say what else do we have? Oh, there's this fade effect, right? This this the splash uh, on the uh, this black fading in, fading out rectangle when we crash into the uh, ground. So let's create a new scene um, and this is going to be just empty note. Um, I'm going to call this fade. Uh, let's save this, go here and this is going to be rather simple because we will use cool trick and use color rect. Okay. Um, we should be able to set the size on it. So let's go to layout, transform, and this is 288, just like our screen size, 512. Uh, let's uh, move it uh, to the middle, so that's going to be minus 144 and minus um, 256, okay. Let's set the initial color and we will just manipulate alpha back and forth to give this splash screen uh, or, this, or this fade in, fade out effect. And we will do that by creating simple animation. So let's add animation player. New animation called this fade. And we will manipulate the color. Right. Okay, so this is going to be real quick. 0 0.25. We're going to go to point one first. So let's let's add the track. It's going to be property track of color rect and that's going to be color. Uh, let's insert key here, then move to point one. Insert another key and it should be at point one. Uh, and this is going to be black 
uh, with all of the opacity. Okay, and then go to point two, insert another key, and that's gonna be transparent again. And I, I don't know what what is going on. Here black, here time should be point two. Uh, right, yes, and it should be transparent again. So if we play this, it just is this like very quick in and out. Cool. And we need a very simple script here. Um, that's gonna be... What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add a script. Okay. Uh, let's give it a class name because why not? Let's get the reference to animation player. Um, and let's create a function and call this play. Animation player play play. Cool. Okay. Then here we can uh, instantiate it. So fade. Um, grab the reference in the game master. Okay, and then end game means fade. Play. And we can cast it here just for good measure. And let's see. So I'm pulling. Oh, uh, it's looping. <laughs> it shouldn't be looping. Let's disable that. Try again. Crash. And it is still looping. Uh, why is that? Okay, now it's okay, now it's disabled. Just once. Yep, yeah, perfect. And if we crash into the into the uh, pipe. Oh, you can see the problem that uh, we crashed it. We played the fade animation once when we hit the pipe and then second time when we hit the ground. And we can fix that really easy by going to animation player and searching for uh, animation finish signal. Let's connect to it and let's just call UE3. So after the first playthrough of the animation, the, the fade is going to remove itself from the tree. Right. And oh, <laughs> and then we don't have reference here because we just removed it from the tree. Uh, so the simple check here should solve that issue. Try this again. Perfect. Cool. Uh, this is almost done we just need a simple ui to um, display some stuff so let's create new scene let's search for canvas layer call this ui save it and let's design the simplest possible ui that we can get um so we will need a margin container um and we will overwrite top to be 42 
and also make it span across okay then we're gonna add child which is going to be label i'm going to call this point label um we are going to add game over box which is going to be um, vertical vbox container let's call this game over box um ch -ch 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 -ch. and we will set this to the middle and we will add texture rect which is going to be that game over text um, and we will add a panel uh, which we will give uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. nothing for now but we'll add another child which is going to be margin container uh, and that margin container is gonna have actually do we need anything here maybe not maybe we don't need the margin container we need a button and that's gonna say just restart okay and we need some container size sizing no we need uh, how it's called minimal custom minimum size yes so that's gonna be 200 by 100 perfect we can position this in the center we can change the color in uh, no this isn't panel styles uh, that's gonna be flat you can change the color to be something like that okay and then buttons gonna have different font because we have a font for that and this is flappy bird maybe bump the font size to be like 30 cool so this is all good here we also need that to be at the top and and in the middle and change the horizontal alignment to center and center and go to team overrides to change the font drop it and now we have to adjust the font size make it rather big maybe 60 and we do we need to change the yes let's change the texture filter to zero zero and i would probably like to give it an outline so outline size like uh, maybe this one an outline color of black or maybe two maybe two okay and this is basically our ui now we just need to script it so let's start by hiding game over box it shouldn't be visible obviously at the start and let's add a script so let's um get the references to elements that we are going to manipulate so game over box points label let's start by saying that add ready we will make sure that points label text is set to zero so percent d percent zero then we need update points function and this is integer 
So points label text is equal to percent d percent points. I'm gonna create on game over function that's gonna just trigger the visibility game over box visible through and last we need to connect the um press function button press and we'll reload the game by simply going get three reload current scene cool then we need to connect this to game manager so let's go there uh, let's actually instantiate that have UI get the reference so control drag and then let's think when we score the point we need to trigger let's cast this because I don't get any autocomplete oh and we need the class name to actually have the ability to cast it and then UI update points to points and UI on game over and is that everything let's see we have the amount of points okay it updates properly then and we have game over and we can press and restart so yeah basically that's the flappy bird uh, that's that's your game right you can of course change it and adjust it as needed but that how would you do that in godot 4 so thank you for that and i'm going to see you in the next one goodbye